What is going on my fitness junkies? In the last year, I've gone from about 16% body fat to about 10% body fat. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the 10 habits that got me to 10% body fat. So let's dive right into it. Number one is tracking your weight consistently. Okay, track your weight literally every day. This is something that my mindset has changed around because in the past, I would only weigh myself once a week and I would recommend that for my clients. But weigh yourself every single day, but don't worry about the day to day, worry about the weekly average. The reason you wanna do this is because if you only weigh yourself once a week, you might be up that, that specific day, you might be down that specific day, but if you weigh yourself throughout the entire week and you get a weekly average, that's gonna give you a much better idea of the trend um, that you're going in across time. So weigh yourself every single day, track consistently. This is gonna keep you accountable with your weight loss or weight gain goals, whatever your goals are. Um, but this is gonna keep you accountable, it's gonna keep you consistent, and it's gonna allow you to get a consistent trend across time if you average throughout the week. Number two is prioritize resistance training. Okay, you wanna do resistance training for your main form of exercise. You don't wanna just cardio yourself away to reach your, your body fat goals because you wanna make sure you know your body fat percentage is your amount of body fat um, to your lean mass. So if you were to lose a bunch of lean mass during the process and just do a ton of cardio, lose a ton of weight, but a lot of it's muscle, that's not really gonna help your body fat percentage, right? So if your main goal is to look better, have a better overall body composition, then resistance training is what's gonna get you there. Don't just try to cardio yourself away to reach your body fat goals. Number three is replacement meals. Okay, so a lot of people think cheat meals. I've even heard people say cheat days. You don't wanna take cheat days in, when you're dieting, okay? But you wanna think of it as replacement meals. But give yourself one to two replacement meals um, each week. Give yourself some flexibility in your diet because if you feel like you've gotta eat the same exact things um, the whole time while you're trying to reach your body fat goals, it's gonna be really hard to be that strict on yourself. So learn how to count calories and macros and have replacement meals, meaning they're the same amount of calories and macros that you're trying to shoot for, or at least somewhat close, but they're different foods from your regular diet. So when, you, when you're able to do this, when you're able to track your calories and macros, it actually is like discipline equals freedom. Um, you know, shout out to Jocko Willink for that quote, but I use it all the time. Uh, but like discipline really does equal freedom. If you have the discipline to learn the skill of tracking your calories and macros, then you can have a lot more flexibility in your diet. You can eat other things that deviate from your chicken and rice and broccoli and stuff like that, because you can still hit the calories and macros that you're shooting for and stay on track towards your goals. Now, number four is sleep. And this is a huge one. And this is why I've done a sleep podcast. So go check that out in my, my later videos, my sleep podcast, how to sleep better. Um, so that's a huge factor. Go check that one out if you want a lot more in depth on how to get better sleep. But getting better sleep is gonna be huge in your body fat percentage goals. You have to recover properly. Um, so I got a Whoop, it's taught me a lot. Um, I'm not sponsored by Whoop or anything like that. I've just really enjoyed it. Um, so I talk about it in the sleep podcast, but you know, it actually does teach you a whole lot about recovery, you know, how much you actually need sleep wise, how to get better sleep. So it's almost like your own little sleep coach, but I, I do a lot of tips and tricks. I'm not gonna go too into detail on this one. Just know that, you know, getting great sleep seven to nine hours a night um, is gonna be huge in reaching your body fat percentage goals. So go check out that sleep podcast, how to sleep better um, in my earlier videos. But yeah, you gotta get good sleep to reach your body fat percentage goals. Number five is controlling variables. Okay, so if you're trying to eat different things every single day and just, you know, in doing different workouts, like say you're just, you know, throwing different workouts off of Instagram and TikTok, just doing different things every day, you're just finding a workout. And if you're just, you know, finding new recipes every single day, you know, changing up your macros all the time, you know, just a bunch of different variables going all over the place. It's gonna be a lot harder to, to kind of see what's happening and make the right adjustments along the way. When you actually keep the variables very similar throughout the process and you just make the, the right adjustments across time, depending on the data that you're seeing, that's gonna be a lot easier to control those variables and, and reach your body fat percentage goals. 
Okay, so do your best to control variables. Um, I actually see that for myself and for a lot of my clients, like eating a lot of the same things helps a lot. I know it doesn't sound fun. Um, you know, there is, you know, you can't have variety in your diet, but you do want to try to control variables as best you can. Um, and I honestly think the best strategy workout wise is four to six weeks at a time doing the same workouts. There's science that shows, you know, that's the amount of time that you can make really good progress with the same stimulus to your muscle groups, just increasing um, sets and reps uh, and, and weight like progressive overload. Um, but if, if you're wanting to, to really maximize your potential in a you know, three, four month plus period of time of trying to reach a body fat percentage goal, try to control as many variables as you can and then just make the correct adjustments along the way um, to reach those goals. Number six is huge and it's non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Sounds like a mouthful. Um, it's also called NEAT, but all this really is is just all the kind of exercise and activity you're getting that's not like deliberate workouts. It's not like your actual exercise. So it's like your steps throughout the day, you know, maybe if you commute to work, things like that, but anything that's not like your actual workouts that you're still burning calories. I mean, cleaning throughout the house, um, like for me, like standing instead of sitting while I'm working, like all these things that you can kind of um, add into your day uh, to burn more calories that's not deliberate workouts. So this is actually the biggest lever that you can pull uh, in increasing your overall caloric expenditure throughout the day and throughout the week. So it's a lot harder to, to just keep adding workouts, keep adding cardio into your routine. But if you can find little ways to get more steps throughout the day, you know, like I said, stand during work, you know, just maybe even stand, I, I stand when I eat. There's, there's certain little things that you can do to increase calories throughout the day without just keep having to add in more working out. So it, it's, what I found is the biggest lever that you can pull and the steps is really the easiest thing because it's not that hard to get more steps in. If you're able to just find time throughout the day, you know, five, 10 minute little walks in between working and things like that really add up. If you can get 10 to 12,000 steps a day and you were getting five, 6,000 before or even lower, like the amount of calories you're gonna burn throughout the week is so much more. So. This is one of the biggest levers you can pull, but your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your NEAT, try to increase that as you go. Number seven is weighing your food with a food scale. All right, a lot of people act like it's the most tedious task in the world to just weigh your food. It literally takes a few extra seconds uh, to, to weigh your food before you eat it, or say if you're someone that brings your lunch to work or whatever it is, like weigh your food before you pack it in a lunchbox and stuff like that, it literally takes barely any more time and it's going to allow you to be so much more exact with what you're eating and what you're intaking and that's really the only way to get really close to your your calories and macro goals now, even at my experience level you know tracking things like this for for probably six seven plus years i'm not going to be able to even eyeball and know what's in certain foods at this point like it I still weigh my food if I'm strict and cut. And if you're trying to reach your body fat goals, you have to weigh your food. I mean, it's just it's just a necessary thing to do. So weighing your food, tracking it, weighing it on a food scale is a, a huge habit change that's gonna allow you to reach your fat loss goals. Now, number eight is having accountability. All right, so having some sort of external accountability is gonna be a huge factor in reaching your goals, okay? so. I'm someone, I'm a coach, right? I'm a fitness coach. And this was one of the first times that I got my own coach for, for one of my goals. So I, I've had a, a person, like an in-person personal trainer when I first got started. And that was a great experience. What actually a huge reason why I wanted to become a coach, but it had been a long time since I had my own coach. And so I, I got a, a really serious coach. He's a Olympia stage competitor, bodybuilder. He's trained big names in the fitness industry, including Christian Guzman. Um, but having that, having someone to like kind of raise my standard and hold myself to a higher standard, because you know, even as a fitness coach, we act like we can hold ourselves accountable. Um, but there, there are just times that you let some things slip and you're able to justify things to yourself. Like, oh no, I, I can have an extra cheat meal this week. I, I did pretty good. 
you know, but when you have that external accountability, when you have to check in with someone, you've got to kind of report, you know, send them your weight, send them your progress pictures, uh, let them know kind of how you've been doing diet wise, workout wise, kind of when you have someone to report to and stay accountable to other than yourself, it just holds yourself to an even higher standard. So having external accountability is gonna be a huge factor in reaching your, your fat loss goals. Now, number nine is having a real why and holding yourself and reminding yourself of that why. Okay, so my real why, you know, as a fitness coach, my why is I'm wanting to accomplish these goals to be a leader and inspire all my clients, my family, everyone that follows me on social media. That's my why. Um, so if you don't have that, you know, if, if this isn't your life and like you're not a fitness coach and you don't have clients and stuff like that, you're that you're trying to inspire, <clears throat> just know that you at least have um, one or two people that look up to you. you know, I've made a post on this in the past, but there, I, I guarantee you, you're a, mo a role model for at least one or two people in your life. So have those people in mind. Um, and even if it's not that, like I'm sure you can come up with a why that's kind of bigger than yourself even. Um, even, if, even if it's not bigger than yourself, come up with a, a, a why that's maybe even more than just, I wanna look better, you know, a vain reason like that. Like have a real why on why you wanna reach these body fat percentage goals. Maybe there's serious health concerns for you, but you know, don't lie to yourself. And, and remind yourself of the real reasons why you want to accomplish this goal. And that's going to allow you to stay motivated throughout the whole process because it is tough. It's hard to reach, you know, losing five plus percent body fat. That, that's, that's no small goal. So it is going to be tough at times, but when you have these real whys, that's going to keep you on track. That's going to keep you going. Um, so I would highly recommend writing them down, maybe put them up somewhere um, and maybe even write them down every day. Uh, write down your why every single day when if you journal and things like that. <clears throat> and that's going to keep you in line. It's going to keep your mindset where it needs to be. And it's going to allow you not to get demotivated throughout the process. And that leads in to habit number 10, which is just seeing things to completion. All right. And not flip flopping your goals too much. I see it all the time where someone they, they start to lose some weight and they're like, oh, well, I'm, now I'm looking kind of small. I wanna, I wanna bulk back up and they're flip-flopping between or on the other end, they're, they're bulking and they wanna try to put on muscle and they're like, ah, I just, I'm looking fluffy. I wanna lean back out. So whatever your goals are, you know, see things to completion, like set a timeline, set a goal, see that to completion before you flip-flop goals. All right, so give things their due time and, and make sure you stick with the process for the amount of time that it's gonna to take to get to that goal and see it through. Okay, so I could have, you know, halfway through been like, man, I'm just, I'm looking so small in my shirts, I wanna bulk back up, but that wouldn't have allowed me to, to lose 6% body fat um, and 28 pounds throughout the process. Uh, so see things to completion. That's the only way you're gonna reach your goals. All right, guys, I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope you got some practical tips that you can implement right away. But on the Elevate Everyday podcast and my YouTube channel, uh, we're, we're all about putting it into action right away. So don't just listen and, and not make any changes. That's that's literally what low intelligence, that's, that's like the definition of low intelligence. You, you learn something and you don't put it into action, you didn't actually learn it, right? So once you listen to this, put it into action. That's what intelligence really is. It's being able to make changes and put it into action right away and, and actually change. So listen to this, put this stuff into action. If you want more help, um, comment transform or reach me on Instagram and, and message me transform and we can get a more detailed approach to reach your goals. Uh, but your approach really does depend on where you're at in your journey as well. So, you know, if you're a beginner, if you're kind of intermediate, if you're advanced, uh, we, you know, we want to meet you where you're at and give you the game plan and the blueprint to get where you want to go. Okay. So reach out to me if you want to learn more. But other than that, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, guys. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. Um, so let's get there. Let's keep this community growing. Fitness junkies to the damn moon. Success junkies to the damn moon, because I've got a broadcast channel called Success Junkies now. Um, and I would say like my channel is more about basically just overall growth and elevating every day. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. Love you. See you in the next one. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.